So this is the third lecture in electrochemistry, and we're going to do the same thing as you've done before. So please make sure that you start by setting up the targets in your learning target notebook and skimming the reading and starting your notes. And so um, here's what you need to know for your learning targets. Please notice it's all from section 21.7, which begins on page 974 in your book. You're going to basically get a, a little introduction started for yourself. So pause the video now. When you're finished, you can restart it. So now that you have an introduction, let's go. So this is about electrolysis today. And one of the biggest differences that you have to be aware of now that you've done your learning targets is the idea that in electrolysis, sometimes the water is actually part of the reaction at the electrodes. So on the reduction potential chart, um, you'll have to notice now that there are two equations that will be really a common reference for you as you determine what happens during electrolysis. So I've highlighted them on here, but notice that this is the one where water is reduced. And um, this is the one, if you reverse it, where water is oxidized. And so you have to make sure that you're thinking about water as a reactant if water is being the reduction or water is being the oxidation. So this is a, an important distinction. So we'd have to reverse the equation um, at the top up here to form oxygen gas. That's because in water, the O is, uh, has an oxidation number of negative two, and if it becomes oxygen gas, now it has an oxidation number of zero. So really it's not the water, it's the oxygen in the water, but because we can't separate it out, we say the water is oxidized. And the same thing that happens down here, but because in water, the oxidation number of hydrogen is plus one, and it becomes H2, so now its oxidation number is zero. So this is the reduction. And again, it's really the hydrogen, but we can't separate it out, so we say the water is reduced. So this is some terminology that you'll run into as you start working through um, electrolysis. So, a couple of things. How electrolysis is different from voltaic cells. First of all, 100% um, of the time, it feels like the reactions take place in one container or in one solution. And we might be able to electrolyze um, a pure substance now, but it has to be a molten ionic compound. So um, it is possible that it could be not in solution, but it needs to be molten. If it's a solid ionic compound, it can't conduct electricity. The other biggest difference is that the overall cell potential is negative. And that potential that you find, that negative potential, would be the voltage that you would have to supply to make the reaction occur. Remember, these are non-spontaneous or thermodynamically unfavorable or reactant-favored reactions. And um, the big thing that you really need to focus on is that if you are electrolyzing an aqueous solution, you will have to decide which reaction occurs at each electrode. You know, in a voltaic cell, you had two reactions possible, and you said this one will be the reduction based on its more positive potential, and the other one would be then, by default, the oxidation. In this case, you'll have to decide at the cathode which reaction, water or an ion, is reduced, and at the anode which reaction, the water or an ion, is oxidized. And often, um, that's kind of a challenging decision, so we'll go through that together. One other thing would be that the electrodes are almost always inert. They're not usually a part of the reaction. They're simply there to conduct electricity. So we often use platinum or carbon for our inert, inert graphite rods, basically for our inert electrodes. Um, and something important to remember, because you have to make a decision about who could be oxidized or who could be reduced, is that in um, an electrolytic cell, we say that since the electrons are forced into, pushed into the cathode, not just drawn to the cathode, that the charge of the cathode is negative. And if this is negative, that means that the positive ions are the only ones that will migrate toward it. The negative ones would be repelled um, and toward the relatively positive um, because it's lost electrons and they've been pulled out, not just drawn out, they've been pulled out so the anode is positive and that means that it would repel the positive ions and attract the negative ions. Okay, so this is an important distinction because you don't have four options for what can happen at each electrode, you only have two.
So at the cathode, it will either be water reducing or the cation, and at the anode, it will be water oxidizing or the anion. So this is important, cation cathode and anion gets drawn to the anode for oxidation. And these reactions are not complete um, here. These need to be needing electrons, etc. But I just wanted to have you have an idea that that's what you were looking at. So um, predicting the products of electrolysis, we're going to work with this a little bit. And it's either going to be molten ionic compounds. Remember that solid ionic compounds do not ele conduct electricity, so they can't be electrolyzed. But if they're molten, the ions are free-flowing, so they do conduct electricity. And um, it's pretty straightforward because you have no water in there. It's simply the cation will be reduced at the cathode and the anion will be oxidized at the anode. And you'll use a reduction potential chart to figure out the voltage required. So a really simple example here would be the electrolysis of molten copper to bromide. So um, this would be copper to bromide. Whoops, sorry copper two bromide, Cu2 plus, and Br1 minus gives us CuBr2. And in this case, the copper two ion is going to reduce to solid copper, and the bromide, the bromide ion is gonna go in reverse. So I'm actually gonna um, rewrite this half reaction because when this goes in reverse, we don't really have, remember this is E of reduction written from the reduction potential chart. So um, in this case, we know that the copper ions, we're not looking for the most positive like you did in the voltaic cell, you're looking for what do you know is occurring. So we know that the copper two ions have to reduce to solid copper. Um, and we know that the bromide in copper two bromide is a bromide ion. So that means that it's gotta be the oxidation. So I'm gonna rewrite that equation to be R minus yields Br2 liquid plus two electrons, and the E of oxidation will be negative 1.07 volts. And I'm gonna cross through this reaction because it's not really occurring, okay? So what's happening is that we have the oxidation of the bromide ion, and we know that, remember, because we started with copper two bromide. So this is Cu2 plus, and this is Br1. Br1 minus, and those are our only options for what can happen. So when I combine these two equations together, they both have two electrons, so I can just add them together. The difference is, is that instead of writing these as ions, I'm going to go ahead and write them as CuBr2 liquid. That's a little bit confusing because we're used to writing net ionic equations, but remember they're telling us that we're starting with molten copper to bromide. Okay. Um, and then I'm just going to take the products after I add them together, which would be solid copper and Br2 liquid, and the two electrons cancel. And then to find the voltage, I'm going to add together the positive 0.34 volts from the reduction and the negative 1.07 volts from the oxidation, and that gives me negative 0.73 volts which would then be the voltage that I would have to apply to this to, in order for that to actually electrolyze. So remember, this is pretty straightforward. You don't have any choices to make. It's the cation in the compound reduces at the cathode and the anion um, oxidizes at the anode. So let's make this a little harder. So this is a little bit trickier because you have some decisions to make. So this case, it's aqueous potassium iodide, which means that really what I have is K plus ions and I minus ions floating around in a beaker of water, okay? And in this case now, we have to make the decision as to what will happen at each electrode. And so the reduction is still at the cathode. So our options, I pulled them off the chart already to make it easier, but normally you would have to start by pulling your options off the chart. So these off the chart are E of reductions, and so are these, because I'm just literally reading the chart. So notice that these are still written all as reductions. So um, at the cathode, it's pretty easy because you're just choosing your more positive reduction potential. Neither one is positive, but in this case, the reduction of the water is more likely than the reduction of potassium ion. So I'm going to cross through that. At the anode, 
I have to reverse both equations. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, it would be 2 water forms O2 plus 4H plus plus 4 electrons. And now the E of oxidation would be negative 1.23 volts. Or the uh, 2I minus can form I2 and two electrons, and its E of oxidation could be negative 0.53 volts. And so again, I'm looking for the more positive, the more positive of the oxidation potentials. So remember, this isn't really happening as a reduction, okay? But now I'm looking at the more positive of the oxidation potentials, and I see that that's the negative 0.53. So my option at the anode for the oxidation is not the water, but rather the iodine. Okay, so in this case now the electrons need to match, but it's two electrons and two electrons. So I can add those together and I get two H2O um, plus two I minus yields H2 plus two, oops, let me do this with the actual reactants, plus I2 plus two OH minus. So all I did was add those two equations together and um, then I'm going to add together to find the voltage, the negative 0.83 volts from the reduction and the negative 0.53 volts from the oxidation, which gives me a negative 1.36 volts from overall. So this is the voltage I would have to apply. I do want to talk about what you would see happening here. Um, at the cathode, notice that we're producing hydrogen gas. So this would be bubbles, right? And at the anode, we're producing iodine, which would be solid. And so we'd start to see solid crystals forming. And they're gonna form on the electrode itself, but because they um, are molecular and they don't conduct electricity, they will start to fall off the electrode. So this is a really important difference um, in some cases. Sometimes you actually form the metal, the solid metal would plate on, right? So, um, so actually we can kinda, kinda go back and look at the other one. And this here would change the pH and it would make it basic when it's finished. And we would be able to see this if we added an indicator, it would show the basic color. So often we would add phenolphthalein. This solution would start out as colorless and end up as pink because of the OH minus. And you'd see that forming around the electrode um, where the water is being reduced because that's where the OH minus is forming. So this kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of what's going on. Let's go back and make sure we talked about everything you needed for your targets. I did not define electrolysis for you. So electrolysis, oops, sorry. Electrolysis is to split. Remember, lysis is split using electricity. So it might not feel like you're splitting it if it's in solution, but a lot of times in solutions, we're splitting the water. So you just have to think about that. Um, the products of a molten salt, the melted salt, we talked about that. The half reaction for the reduction of water and for the oxidation of water, we talked about that. And then we did the example that I asked you to set up. So rewatch if you need to, but hopefully this was helpful.